three years of wheeling and dealing finally paid off. I'm going to do something most comic book collectors here on YouTube try to avoid. I'm going to talk about price. I recently purchased an Amazing Spider-Man key on eBay and I'm going to be 100% honest with the whole process. So as many of you who watch my channel regularly know, I am a stay at home father of two children, a little girl aged 6 and a boy aged 3, and thus I have little to no income. However, over the three years of being at home, I have managed to fund my collection through the hobby itself. You see, back in the day when I was earning, I didn't really have any vices. I didn't smoke, I rarely drank, and I never gambled. In fact, all I ever really did was put my money in collectibles. Now please, understand, this was a totally different time. This was a different era in collecting. Now is the time that people should be selling, not buying. So please don't take this story as a lesson into what you should be doing at this moment in time. During this time, I had everything. Toys, comics, movie posters, even authentic movie props. And so in 2019, after I decided I would start collecting Amazing Spider-Man comic books properly, I knew that in order to be successful, I would have to sell some of the stuff to fund it. So some of you might remember that a few months ago, I released a video about selling the last of my non-Spider-Man comic books. And in that video, I showed you all the various keys that I once held within my collection. And as some of you might recall from that video, my plans didn't exactly go as I first intended due to the pandemic and global lockdowns. Put basically, my plan completely fell apart and I was forced to use my comic book funds in order to deal with real world problems. And this of course was completely acceptable. After all, family comes first. This then left me with only two books away from my collection being complete. However, I had nothing left to sell. Well, no more comic books at least. Fast forward a few months and things still weren't letting up in the financial situation. And so another decision had to be made. I eventually came to the conclusion that I had no other choice but to sell my original George Romero zombie posters. These posters were super special to me as it was these original movies that impacted my life and built my career within special effects. These posters were signed by multiple cast members of the franchise as well as George Romero himself. After selling the posters I was financially stable once more. In fact I was in the black. I was in profit. And so, not wanting to waste this opportunity, this little money that I had stashed away, I decided to look online for a cheap Amazing Spider-Man issue number two. Looking online, I found a handful of copies, all at various grades and conditions. And though the one I eventually picked was a little out of my budget, I took the gamble and bought it. Yes, putting myself just a tiny bit back into debt. Now I have to say, none of this was plain sailing. Originally, this book had a make an offer option and I fully intended to make an offer more closer to my budget. However, overnight, this offer button was removed. That was my first alarm bell. Then a day later, I noticed they had an issue three also up for sale for the same price at the same grade. However, this one was an auction and not a buy it now price. And thus my second alarm bell began to ring. I mean, can you imagine if this auction for issue number three sold for much more than its original starting price, then surely they would have to revise their buy it now option for issue number two. Put simply, in the most basic terms, FOMO hit me hard and I panicked. Did I make the right choice? Was I right to buy this book? I think so. I mean, given the options that were available to me on eBay, this was certainly by far the best value for money. And yeah, it arrived super fast. I mean, I actually sold these posters of mine to someone in Ireland and it took longer for them to get there than it did for this book to get over to me from the United States. I mean, there's clearly something wrong with the postal system, right? In all honesty, I'm surprised that I got this far in three years, especially when you realize that I haven't worked in that same amount of time. This is the definition of the hobby paying for itself. I now own a near complete Amazing Spider-Man collection from 1963 to present day with only issue one to go and it hasn't cost me any additional money to achieve. But please do note, yes I am very proud of this achievement, but this isn't me boasting. Instead this is me telling you guys a story in order to help educate you and others out there with a goal or a dream. It is possible, although harder now I think, to make this hobby pay for itself and I wanted to be honest with you all in regards to my journey. This right here is now the most expensive book that I have ever purchased within my collection, and yet that's saying something. 
I mean for the issue number 14, first appearance of Green Goblin, I paid £500, and for my giant size X-Men I paid £800, both of which have gone up considerably in price. However this one I paid right up front, you saw it right there, 1200 and something odd pounds. And yeah, that's an awful lot of money, especially when you consider that this is just a collection of 1960s paper. Honestly guys, I am just so happy to hold this book, so happy to own a copy of Amazing Spider-Man 2 that brings me that one step closer to achieving my goal. Can you believe I only have one issue left to get? Now granted it is issue one and it's probably the worst book to be going after right now with the prices at an all time high and I have no idea when I'm going to achieve that goal and finally complete the set but honestly how could I ever be upset with what I have already achieved you know it doesn't matter if it takes me 10 years to get that issue number one the fact is that I managed to get every single other amazing spider-man book within just three years and those three years were three years that I wasn't even working I was at home here with the kids this is the definition of the hobby paying for itself and I couldn't be happier Yes, I've had to let some things go that I would hold dear to my heart, but at the end of the day, it's Spider-Man. What else am I to do? I have to own these books. I have to finish this collection. And now with just one step to go, that's what I'm setting my sights on. So again, I don't know if it's going to take me five years, 10 years, 20 to 30 years. I have no idea, but I will own this collection. If you enjoyed this video and you appreciate my honesty with how I got this far with my Amazing Spider-Man collection in such a short period of time, please let me know by hitting that like button. It really goes a long way to helping the channel grow. If you want to see more from my Spider-Man collection, you can check out this video right up here. And until next time, I'll see you in another life. Take care.